The AROM program was developed with the good work that we've been doing with UINR. UINR was already well established and working on a number of collaborative initiatives around the Bordeaux Lakes and the management of its resources. We were already doing oceans management. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans saw and recognized this and they said, and they told us that can we use this model as uh, something to address other watersheds in Canada. It was one year tri on trial basis. Uh, we were so successful, they asked us if we can develop a five-year plan, which was a lot easier than dealing with uh, funding every year or every two years. The five-year program is excellent because uh, you can do long-term planning. It allowed a very, very precious capacity building among its First Nation, provided young people the opportunity to uh, have a first job, have a first job home, have a first job home doing something that mattered. This would not have happened without UINR. UINR is the Mi'kmaq voice on stewardship management and research on natural resources and environment in Unamagi. We represent Eskasoni, Member 2, Budladek, Wakeabaw and Wagbakuk. Lisa Young, Executive Director at UINR. Charlie Dennis, Senior Advisor for the Unamagi Institute of Natural Resources. Annie Johnson, Director of Administration at UINR. At UINR, we work on issues that are relevant to our communities. We engage with the communities on a number of levels through our elders' meetings, our regular board meetings with the chiefs. Terry Paul, and I'm the chief of member two. The chiefs being the board at the, the UINR showed everybody that, uh, you know, we support it and proven it that we are committed to it by being on the board and being very active. They're connected to their communities. They sit on our board. They bring the concerns of their communities to us. We also have meetings regularly with our fishers, our hunters, and our gatherers. The issues that we work on come right from our communities. The Mi'kmaq way has a spiritual element that ties us to the plants, animals, and the whole environment. We speak for species that can't speak for themselves. UNR's strength is an in integrating scientific research with traditional Mi'kmaq knowledge. To white seeing. Shelley Denning, I'm the Director of Research and Stewardship at UINR. Cheryl Bartlett, Cape Breton University. Many of the things that are near and dear to the uh, heart of the projects that I've been doing at the university are shared by what UINR would like to see happen, and that's a, a coming together of the Aboriginal traditional knowledge and the Western sciences. A lot of our products have been developed around that idea. Lobster, for example, it's voluntary. It's it's, um, you know, things that you can do to, to help enhance lobster populations in the Bordeaux. We've done work with uh, eels, promoting uh, Mi'kmaq traditional values and practices for eel conservation. With uh, salmon right now, we're concentrating a lot on research. We're trying to do things together from what Elder Albert refers to as a two-eyed seeing approach. Two-eyed seeing implies or gently reminds us how interdependent and interconnected we are. It's a guiding principle of how we should live. UINR has been the most important partner that I have worked with within my integrative science research program over the years. Nedoglimp is at the heart of everything we do at UINR. Nedoglimp is the use of natural bounty. The support and well-being of you and your community. Nedoglimp means having community nutrition. And economic well-being. Without jeopardizing the environment. As Mi'kmaq, we have the right to access and use our resources. And the responsibility to use them sustainably. We work so that future generations will enjoy the beauty and bounty that nourished our people emotionally and physically for thousands of years. We also have a Commercial Fisheries Liaison Coordinator that liaises with each of our member communities. John Couture, I'm the Commercial Fisheries Liaison Coordinator for UINR. I attend all DFO resource meetings, uh, science meetings, peer reviews, industry related meetings, and I, I go on behalf of the communities. Basically, I'm the eyes and the ears a resource to go out on their behalf and to seek out information and to seek solutions to acquire information. Uh, so that I can answer the questions that I know I'm going to hear when I get back to the communities. We work closely with the guardians in each of the communities, and they are right on the ground. Lance Paul, member two, fishery guardian. Tracy Gugu, I'm the guardian coordinator of Wigalma First Nation. Norman Bess, Bodledek First Nation, fishery guardian. Anthony Pirro, I live in Wamukuk, manager for the guardian program down here. Keith Christmas, and I'm the Unumagi guardian coordinator. The guardians are important because they are a direct link to the community and the community members. We uh, work uh, very close with the uh, fishery officers. Monitor the food fishery. Inspecting boats, check their tags. Fish for our elders. We develop new programs for our children. Water sampling. Protection of the environment. Also clean our river. We've learned a lot from UINR. The gardening coordinator just helps us uh, 
uh, be more aware of, of projects that are coming up, uh, training opportunities that are available. To me, it's sort of a, a, the head of communications for, for all the guardians. Mark McPhail, I'm the Director of Forestry at UINR. The lion's share of the work I do is field work, taking care of the contractors, the harvesting contractors. We're involved with the private civil culture program, supervising the Crown civil culture crew, as well as, of course, harvesting. Forest is a very critical component. It's true forest that not only provides us the clean air, the clean drinking water and the fertile soil, but it also provides us food, dwelling, and medicines. One of the more significant projects UINR has been involved with is a uh, Salmon River Restoration Project. We decided that uh, we were going to go and we we're going to plant Acadian species in these areas that were degraded. We went out over a two-day period and we planted along the Margarine and Middle River. Lorraine Marshall, UINR. I do water quality. As a monitor, my activities include collecting samples in the field. She does water quality testing on it right here in, in our labs in Eskasoni. And what we test for is we test for coliform bacteria. While I'm there, I also check to see that the chlorine is being put into the the system. That information is uploaded to a central database at Health Canada. The job that I do is important because of safe drinking water within our communities. We take our responsibility for the natural environment seriously. Marine science research. Species management. Forestry. Water quality monitoring. And environmental partnerships are among our responsibilities. René Lavoie, scientist emeritus, Fisheries and Oceans Canada. Dan Christmas, I'm a senior advisor for member two. My name is Tom Sowell and I'm the director of negotiations with the Nova Scotia Office of Aboriginal Affairs. Chair Monroe, Nova Scotia Environment. Shelley Porter, one of the coordinators of the Bredore Lakes Collaborative Environmental Planning Initiative, the CEPI. UNR played a key role in the development of CEPI. We had to develop partnerships with the federal government, with the provincial government, and with the municipalities. UINR approached the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans and, and various departments in the provinces about concerns of water quality in the Bredore Lakes. And that's how CEPI was born. It came a partnership between the provincial government, the federal government, municipalities and the Mi'kmaq. Three federal government departments. Four provincial departments. Five municipalities. Five First Nation chief on a grade to sign the charter. Also recently, Parks Canada has joined our senior council. One of CEPI's strengths is the, is the building of the partnerships, again, facilitated by UINR. We refer to UINR usually as the host of the CEPI. They do uh, our administrative work. Um, we use their staff sometimes, the staff expertise. It's an exchange of skills and knowledge. May Rowe, Cape Breton Regional Municipality. Charles Blaise Young, I've been with the council for the last Six terms now, I represent this because only as mass money was. Bidubal is a unique partnership. I dare say there's probably not a partnership like it in all of Canada. Bidubal um, represents the five First Nations. It also represents the municipal, all the municipalities on the island. It brings First Nations people and municipalities together to work on issues of mutual concern, water and wastewater um, management and infrastructure. The Mi'kmaq word for, for the Bredore Lakes is Bidubal and what Bidu Baluxi translates is flowing into oneness. So it really describes how a watershed works. From an environment's perspective, there are no boundaries. But there are always opportunities to collaborate and to engage and to work with others. And I think both Biduba and CEPI and UINR, certainly with its um, partnerships, um, have brought to life that, that need to work together. UINR opened up the gates for me with, with CEPI and Bidu Bach. It's all of all the same same thing. It's a protection of the Bedore Lake. Lewis Hinks, I'm program director for the Atlantic Salmon Federation here in Nova Scotia. John Hart, I'm president of the Mercury Salmon Association, director of the Nova Scotia Salmon Association, and one of the founding members of the CSI Cape Breton. CSI was developed from a, a, a willingness and a desire, I guess, and a, and a need in some ways for First Nations and non-Aboriginal groups to work together for Atlantic Salmon. It's allowed us to see things from First Nations perspective. We have tried to show them things from our perspective and it's been a mutual education for everyone. Without a doubt in my mind, one of the biggest successes is the, the open lines of communications that we've built through this. UNR has done a fantastic job over the years. Positive from my perspective. Education, cooperation, collaboration. One of our partnerships at UINR that's fairly new is with the Mi'kmaq Environmental Learning Centre, or MILK. Nadine Lafort, I'm the Education and Outreach Coordinator with the Mi'kmaq Environmental Learning Centre. MILK uh, facilitates workshops. We often draw upon UINR for their expertise. MILK can bring 
the knowledge that UINR is researching, is working on in the forest or in the lakes or on the land or with water. And we can bring that information to students, to parents, to teachers and to community members. Parks Canada, Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Canada, Health Canada, Transport Canada, Environment Canada, the Provincial Department of Natural Resources, Nova Scotia Environment, the Nova Scotia Fisheries and Agriculture, Nova Scotia Office of Aboriginal Affairs, KMK, Cape Breton University, Nova Forest Alliance, Atlantic Salmon Conservation Foundation, CMM, DFO, they provide us our core funding. I'm Weldon Bone and I'm the Director of Communication at UINR. My job is to let people know about the great work we do here. We do that through our newsletter, the UINR Martin which comes out quarterly, our website, uinr.ca, Facebook, Twitter, and a host of other videos, publications, maps, and reports. We do important work at UINR, and we want everyone to know about it. UINR gives us that collective voice of five First Nations. I believe it's, uh, it's a godsend to, uh, to our people. I tell my friends, I go to work every day and I save the world. And what could be, you know, what could be a more rewarding job than that? UINR has done some work in the past with CMM on issues such as forestry management and also on the Glues Cap Cave Initiative. But we anticipate that we're going to work with them so much closely now, now that MCG has been formed. That's the Mi'kmaq Conservation Group, which is the AGRAM uh, group for the mainland. They're fairly new. They started uh, a couple of years ago. We're hoping to uh, help them as much as possible and find ways to address uh, some of the issues that the problems that they're having in the mainland. Because there was only UINR at the time, a lot of our mainland communities weren't being, I guess, served when it came to uh, the environmental services we now offer. So when they heard that MCG or the Mi'kmaq Conservation Group is out of its foundation year, they they were very excited. They're a much needed organization in Nova Scotia. You know, we're concentrating on Unamagi. Cape Breton is our focus, Bredore Lakes is our focus. So, um, you know, we can't be everywhere. And I think it's really great that we have somebody who can help deal with the issues that are coming up on the mainland. The mission statement of MCG, the Mi'kmaq Conservation Group, is to promote and restore the concept of Nedugalim in the Bay of Fundy watershed. Donald Julian, I'm Executive Director for Confederacy of Mainland Mi'kmaq. Angeline Gillis, and I'm the manager of the Mi'kmaq Conservation Group. The Confederacy of Mainland Mi'kmaq is made out of six communities in mainland of Nova Scotia. I guess the organization that has a program called Mi'kmaq Conservation Group. The Confederacy of Mainland Mi'kmaq is essentially our governing body. However, uh, they are not the only group that we seek guidance from. We do have an advisory committee made up of, most are made up of fishery managers, or in the case of uh, Fort Folly, um, their habitat recovery center managers. They're the ones that are out in the water, they're the ones that are doing the fisheries, so they would know and understand what each one of their communities are requiring. Coyer Francis, the Commercial Fisheries Liaison Coordinator, with the Mi'kmaq Conservation Group. My role as a CFLC would be uh, the eyes and ears for the uh, number of First Nation uh, communities that, that are represented through MCG in the commercial fishery. My role as a CFLC also includes uh, my efforts as a technical resource for them, not only in the commercial fishery, but also somewhat in the food, social, and ceremonial fisheries. The word Nedigalimp to me as a Mi'kmaq person is very important and integral in the way I live my life. The idea of Nedigalimp, taking what we need today uh, and leaving some for tomorrow, what we're talking about is protecting Mother Nature, protecting our earth, protecting our land. If we conduct our activities and access in a manner that would uphold these principles, we could always ensure that there would be something there left for our kids tomorrow and also that we could access that resource for the well-being of our communities today. Gail Tupper and I work at Gloose Cap First Nation as a fisheries coordinator. The relationship that I'm hoping to have between the Gloose Cap First Nation and the Mi'kmaq Conservation Group is to allow us to gain knowledge from the conservation group as it pertains to fisheries and conservation. I'm hoping the Mi'kmaq Conservation Group will be able to uh, expand our food fishery, food and social ceremonial fisheries to allow the community members to to fish more. And I'm hoping that the youth, through through me getting more information and passing it on to the community, 
the youth will want to be more involved. Adam Sherry and I'm the GIS technician with MCG. The acronym for GIS is Geographic Information System. The easiest way to explain it is building databases and representing that data in map form. I will be working on any sort of maps that are necessary for the reports with the research and education officers. As well, I will be going out into the communities to capture data so that the communities have their own representative from the MCG collecting that data and is self-reliant. Santa Cavanaugh, I work as a research and education officer at Mi'kmaq Conservation Group. I've been involved in working with our advisory board, which has members from six Mi'kmaq communities on research and education ideas. Our hope is to do a lot of educational activities because it's so important for communities to have youth involved. One of our goals is bringing elders and youth together. To be reconnected with their, with their traditions. While also exposing them to science, interesting tools and technology, language and arts, and anything that can make that connection with the environment. Those are our future leadership. They're going to be our future fishermen. Hopefully they're going to be our future scientists. By re reconnecting them with our elders and with their environment, our hope is that we are going to see more Mi'kmaq uh, youth explore the environmental field. Erica Perrier, one of the junior research and education officers at the Mi'kmaq Conservation Group. One of the projects that I'm working on right now is a tree planting project using Elder Albert Marshall's two-eyed seeing approach. He's actually an elder on our advisory committee. Two-eyed seeing implies that um, you have to constantly look into the past and look at our actions, our inactions, and what lessons we need to draw from them and bring those lessons to the present. What we're trying to do is, in each of our communities, go in and do a workshop about two-eyed seeing, so looking at the indigenous perspective of the forest and the Acadian forest, which is natural to Nova Scotia. So traditional knowledge, and we'd apply that to the forest, and then we'd also to integrate the Western sciences, so the natural sciences like biology and chemistry. The workshop would be in the morning, in the afternoon, we'd get the community together and get youth and elders from the community and go and plant trees. We did some activities with uh, Mi'kmaq children from four communities. We played games with them. Uh, we did a water quality mystery game. In Picto Landing, Santa and I have been talking uh, to the principal and the education coordinator. They have Boat Harbor, which um, historically has so much influence on the community and due to pollution, and so they thought it would be really neat for the kids to actually interview elders to find out what the harbor was like before and compare to what it is now and its effect on their community. Clayton Copway, I'm a junior research and education officer with the Mi'kmaq Conservation Group. I'm part of a pilot project where we're trying to um, incubate Atlantic salmon eggs in an experimental flume in a hatchery. This is a project we're working on in partnership with Fort Folly uh, Habitat Recovery Program and also with the Mactaquac Hatchery in New Brunswick to learn about the early life stages of salmon and the different ways you can raise salmon eggs in a hatchery environment or a semi-natural environment or a wild environment. What we hope to do with that project is to take the results of that and actually apply it in the field. So uh, partnering with our Mi'kmaq communities, we're going to uh, attempt to do this in the, in the wild to help with re rehabilitation efforts for Atlantic salmon in the Bay of Fundy watershed. Tim Robinson, manager of the Fort Folly Habitat Recovery Program. The Aboriginal youth that come into our program are certified in swift water, uh, water rescue and uh, work safe uh, uh, practices, as well as uh, being certified in electrofishing and wilderness first aid so that they can work safely in a, in a really dynamic river environment. What the Fort Folly Habitat Recovery Team has been doing for a number of years is they actually have a, a, what they call a smolt wheel. And this is a trap that's designed to capture these small fish. They count them and in some cases they'll even do experiments where they'll transplant um, young salmon to different parts of the, of the stream to get a sense of the timing of that migration. And so I get the opportunity to uh, assist them and to learn how to operate one of these smolt wheels so that we can do that on, our, on the uh, Nova Scotian side 
of the Bay of Fundy. Laura Buck, Fort Folly Habitat Recovery Program, and I'm from Fort Folly. I started on with the recovery program and got trained with the Smolt Wheel, and then it just kind of progressed from there. So I guess I get the chance firsthand to be able to move on as the next generation and be able to acquire this knowledge that I probably wouldn't have been able to gather before. The MCG is a good opportunity for Fort Folly to be a part of um, as it lets us expand our horizons and our project opportunities. You know, being able to attend a lot of these meetings and make more connections with other groups. Donna Morris, I, uh, I'm from Indian Brook, Nova Scotia. I work as a cultural interpreter at uh, Kejimakujik National Park National Historic Site. Do you have a good vision? You have a good vision. You'll need a lot of dedicated people, you know, and people who know their specific communities. I think that the future of the youth lies in the hands of the adults. It's going to take youth, it's going to take adults working with youth, bringing together the youth and the adults. It can be accomplished. It'll be good. There's one message out there that I guess I'm hoping communities will take from, from what we do. Is, and that's that we're here. We're here for our youth in terms of conducting the research and providing the educational tools. We're here for our elders. We do not want to see the knowledge they have lost. We're here for our community members to offer training opportunities so that they too can participate in, in our recovery strategies for the species at risk. Ultimate objective, of course, is that how do we transform ourselves to become a better caretakers. I genuinely feel that the Mi'kmaq Conservation Group is what our communities have been waiting for uh, here on the mainland. It's exciting of building another program and that program is being built fast. I'm really looking forward to the future. ARAM has provided UINR with core funding that has given UINR stability and enables us to focus on issues that are of concern to the communities instead of having to chase money around um, year to year. And that's important because it has led greatly to the success of UINR, not only that it provides um, the ability for us to focus on issues that are important to us, but it provides the stability to an organization which allows us to attract really great people. And our people are one of the main reasons why we are so successful at UINR and why people are so eager to invest in UINR and to collaborate with us on initiatives. When Iran came on board, it created a stability, both in terms of the funding, but as I said before, in terms of the feeling that First Nation had, that they had a commitment that would last for so many years that they could count on, that they could take to the bank, basically. So in terms of attracting good people, they could say, well, we can offer you a contract of so many years, as opposed to, we can hire you for the next six months and hopefully it will be extended. They were able to retain and develop quality people, and the results show today. So thanks to Aram for that. I think MCG is going to, to uh, become invaluable to the mainland bands, as UINR has to Inamagi. MCG is, is, is us many years ago. Uh, I think they can learn a lot from us, but I think by having them being new to the block, new to the business, that we can also learn from them as well. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We don't want to do exactly everything UINR has done, but we want to use their progress over time as a, essentially a guide. They want to see us succeed, they want to see us grow, and they're willing to do whatever they can on their end. To, to see that we succeed. We don't know enough. We need to know more. It's a training, it's a, I guess it's an added training um, program that we can give to the community so that people will learn. I'd like to thank uh, the people who fund ARAM because it's without that funding we wouldn't be here and we'd be struggling and doing project by project and, and year by year and, and that's really hard to develop long-term strategies and goals when you're only looking 12 months ahead. So I'd like to say thank you.